السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين إن شاء الله today we will go on with our uh, 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 thought on the uh, uh, 40 hadith of uh, compiled by uh, Al Imam Al Nawawi. So today, inshallah, we will be working on hadith 4, 5, 6, and 7, inshallah. So to start with uh, the fourth hadith, inshallah, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal. حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الصادق المصدوق. So uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه قال he said uh, he, uh, he uh, uh, سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم talked to us and he is the uh, uh, truthful and the receiver of the truth. So he said إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك So verily the, the creation of uh, each one of you is brought together in the womb's mom in the mother's womb for 40 days in the form of a nutfa, which is a drop. And then this becomes a alaqa, clot of blood for a like period. So for another 40 days. Then it takes another 40 days that this, this alaqa, this clot of blood, is, uh, uh, becomes a mudra. And a mudra is a morsel of flesh. Earlier, uh, scholars used to believe that the embryo is formed at a very early stage in pregnancy. And it was until um, almost mid-1800s uh, when uh, uh, Western scholars came up with a theory that the embryo is formed in stages. But subhanAllah, if you look at the Quran, the Quran stated that the same thing, that the embryo is formed in stages over 1,200 years ago. So the death, the death uh, act, yeah, or um, subhanAllah, from the beginning until the end, there are stages that the human passes. And this hadith acts as one of the most important scientific miracles of the sunnah. It describes the aspects of the embryo, the embryo, yeah, the formation of the embryo. So, uh, subhanAllah, by the way, we all know that the first few months of pregnancy are sometimes very hard for the mother. So we have the 40 days as a drop, then 40 days as a clot, then 40 days, uh, for 40 days later as a morsel of flesh. And this is very hard. These ch changes sometimes are very hard for the mother. So starting with lessons, actually we will be uh, talking about the hadith and the lessons uh, after. So uh, the lesson here is that we have always to be good to our mothers for all they did for us, starting from the first, the first days of 
pregnancy. I know, I know a lady in, uh, in her 40s, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited her to perform Umrah with her mom. And there were some, some family relatives with, with, with them. SubhanAllah, the mom in, uh, is in her late 70s, and she was able to perform the tawaf walking. Walking, uh, and she didn't need a wheelchair. But the sa'i, uh, the sa'i was undoable for her without a wheelchair. So when they, when they hired uh, uh, a wheelchair, the the people or the uh, uh, those who are responsible they 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 offered a man to to push the chair, but the daughter refused. She said, "I myself want to do it." And for herself, and she was thinking that my mom took care of me all my life, and I want to do this. Allah has given me this opportunity now just to pay her a, just one thing or just a very small thing, yani, just a small token that rewards her for one, maybe one thing that she has done for me all her life. So what she did, so she took care of, of the mom and she herself pushed the chair and she did not allow anyone to do it. So she said, all that, what I did for my mom, which is nothing, it took about maybe uh, half an hour, an hour. So she said, that will not equal the pain of one of the pushings while she was delivering me. So, as an advice, just appreciate the difficulties that your mother faced when carrying you and while giving birth to you. Be good to your moms, respect them. Sometimes might, someone might say, okay, but my mom passed away. Well, you can still be good to her. And you can do sadaqa for her. You can do a lot of duha for her. So there are ways to, to appreciate your mom, whether she is alive or she is dead. So these stages that the uh, 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 that the hadith start with remind us of all the stages that a human passes by during his life. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in Surah An Nahl, Ayah seventeen, said, "وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَطْوَارًا," and we created you in stages. So different stages. Sometimes we are happy. Sometimes we feel sad. Sometimes we are healthy. And sometimes we, we, are, we are sick. These are all stages. Sometimes we are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we, we do a lot of dhikr. We do a lot of prayers, a lot of sunnah prayers. Sometimes we feel that we are far. And barely praying the five prayers uh, with, with khushu'a. So the advice here is that there are stages in our lives. And when we pass through the good stages, then we have to take advantage of this time. When we are healthy, and this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس صحتك قبل سقمك We take advantage of five things before five things happens. One of them is your health 
before you come, you become a, you become sick. Take advantage of this stage. Take advantage of your Take advantage of the time of your free time before you become busy. Do not waste your time. So we pass through different stages. Since we are embryos in the wombs of our mom until we die. So we have to take advantage of, of the uh, good stages. We have to do extra deeds, as extra deeds as we can when we are in these stages. Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ثُمَّ يُرْسَلُ إِلَيْهِ الْمَلَكِ فَيَنْفُخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ وَيُؤْمَرُ بِأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتِ بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَأَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَشَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ Then the angel is sent to him. So now, after the third uh, 40 days. So the angel blows the soul into him. And the angel is commanded to record four things. To write down the human's risk, the sustenance, the provision. And the word risk uh, does not uh, always is not always related to money. There is the risk of knowledge, the risk of health, the risk of wisdom, and there are other so many other types of risk. And subhanAllah, sometimes Allah gives the risk of uh, wealth and he takes away the risk of health. So the risk is not divided equally amongst all the people. This one has a very a good amount of risk of, let's say, money. The other one has the risk of wisdom. Someone might have the risk of money, but he cannot eat. He, he doesn't have the risk of health. He would wish that he is healthy enough to be able to eat anything he wants. So the first one is the things that this angel records is to write down the human's risk. And also, he, the, the angel is also commanded to record the lifespan of this human. How long is he going to live? So he is he going to be uh, to reach the old age? Is he going to die a baby? Is he going to die as a young man? So this is recorded. Then his actions and whether he will be happy or miserable. And this might be expanded also that whether he will be happy in the life after. So whether he will enter paradise or miserable or whether he will, he will be in hellfire. فَوَالَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُهُ إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا زِرَاعٌ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابُ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلَهَا By the one other than whom there is no deity. Verily, one, one of you performs the actions of the people of paradise until there is but an arm's length between him and paradise. And that which has been written overtakes him. And so he acts with the actions of the people of the hellfire and thus enters hellfire. You might ask, what are the causes of a bad ending? 
there's so many answers. The first one, corrupt belief, doubts, this or that. Being persistent in sins, no tawbah, no repentance. Choosing to stay away from steadfastness. Someone likes to sin. Loving this mortal dunya over the immortal akhirah. So that the, the heart is attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعٌ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلَهَا And verily, one of you performs the actions of the people of the hellfire until there is but an arm's length between him and the and hellfire. And that which has been written overtakes him. And so he acts with the actions of the people of paradise. And thus he enters paradise. And again, someone might ask, what are the causes for a good ending? Keeping stayed fast, having good thoughts and expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Ana inda husni dhanni abdi bi. Fal yadhunna bi ma yasha. I am the same way to my servant, the same way he thinks of me. So if, if someone thinks that Allah is the most forgivable, for forgiving Allah, Allah is, Allah is going to, to help, Allah is going to show them his mercy, a very strong faith. Also, hastiness and repentance after sinning. If someone sins, then they feel that the, the, this whole dunya is getting uh, uh, um, narrower and narrower. It, it, it's, it's, it's so tight, tight for him. And he won't feel good until he, he repents and asks Allah for, for forgiveness. And another, of course, another good way of uh, having the, uh, uh, another good reason to have a good ending is to keep away from the causes of a bad ending. Avoid what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to avoid. So if we link this hadith to the first hadith we, we started with, do you remember the first hadith we started with? It was about intentions. So in this hadith, we add, we add that all deeds are based upon the final actions. So this should make us fear and never feel safe from entering hellfire. As we never, we never know how our life will end. Nobody guarantees where he will die, how he is going to die, and what he would be doing when he dies. Nobody knows. And that's why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to show us the right way always. And not to be deceived by this dunya. Shaitan swears that he is going to beautify bad deeds to the good humans. And I, I want you to, to I want to emphasize on the word the good humans. Because 
he he knows that the bad humans do not need to be whispered to so they they don't give him hard times but the good humans are those who challenge shaitan so he swears that he will beautify the bad deeds to those people until they die and he will keep doing this until the day of judgment. He promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So shaitan won't stop until the last breath is taken. And at the death time, he would have a cup of water in his hand and, and uh, he, will, he will try to, to uh, convince the pe person who is suffering the agonies of death. He's try trying to convince him to become a non-believer and he promises to give him a sip of water. And that's why when there is someone who is dying, they put drops of water on his lips so that to protect him from the fitna of death, <laughs> the fitna of shaitan. So it's not safe until we take our last breath. And that's why we, we uh, always do, uh, say our dua, Allahumma inna nas'aluka husna al khatima. Oh Allah, give us the best ending. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min fitnati al mamat, min fitnati al mahya wa min fitnati al mamat. Ya Allah, save us. We seek refuge in you from the fitna of shaitan at death time. We make another dua when we say, Allahumma ja'al khayra a'malina khawatimaha. Ya Allah, let the, the last of our actions be the best. So that when we die, we die and you are pleased with us. We move on to hadith and uh, an Aisha radiallahu anha qalat قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد and in another narration في رواية أخرى من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد so Aisha رضي الله عنها uh, reported that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, the messenger of Allah said he who innovates something in this matter so he who innovates something in this matter of ours which is uh, uh, in Islam that which is not of it which does not belong, belong to Islam will have it rejected by Allah. And in another narration, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, he who does an act which we have not commanded will have it rejected by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the first hadith from the 40 hadith dealt with internal aspects of acceptance of deeds, which is the emiya. Now, this hadith deals with the external aspects of the acceptance. So both the internal and the external aspects of acceptance of deeds should be fulfilled. So it's not enough it's not sufficient to just have a good intention for the action to be accepted. No. A thief might have a good intention, so he wants to steal some money to feed the poor. Will he be rewarded? Will that action be accepted? 
Is that action lawful? So, no innovations. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu narrated that, I'm going to read the hadith now in Arabic. جَاءَ ثَلَاثَةُ رَهْطٍ إِلَىٰ بُيُوتِ أَزْوَاجِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَسْأَلُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَةِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَلَمَّا أُخْبِرُوا كَأَنَّهُمْ تَقَالُوهَا So three men came to the houses of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to inquire about the worship of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when they were informed, they thought of it as not sufficient. قَالَ أَحَدُهُمْ أَمَّا أَنَا فَأُصَلِّ اللَّيْلَ أَبَدًا so one of them said, as for me, I pray all night long. So the first one prays all night and he does not sleep. The second one said, I fast continuously and do not break it. So I'm fasting every day. And the third one said, And I abstain from women and I will never get married. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard, heard about them and he came to them فقال, فجاء رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أنتم الذين قلتم كذا وكذا So he, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم came to them and he said Are you the people who said so and so? أما والله إني لأخشاكم لله وأتقاكم له By Allah I fear Allah more than you do, and I am the most obedient, I am the most dutiful among you to him. But I observe fast and I break it. I perform salah and sleep at night. And I marry a woman. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي So whoever turns away from my sunnah does not belong to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم Today I completed. I have perfected your religion. So by the religion being complete we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not left any good or bad thing except that he mentioned. So our lesson from this hadith is that we have, we have to appreciate Allah's blessings over us. So Allah has perfected his religion. He completed his religion for us. So we have, we have to appreciate this blessing that we do not need to look elsewhere to get closer to him. The Quran is there. The Sunnah is there. The Hadith is there. Taraktu fikum amrain. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I left two things for you. If you just get hold to them, then you will be saved. It's a Quran and a Sunnah. So at the end of this hadith, Imam al-Nawawi put another narration of the hadith. And we, we find similar wordings. And the reason for that is that he wants us to show, to know that it's not just the person who starts the innovation is wrong, but also the person who follows him in doing so is also wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has given us countless blessings. And one of these blessings is the intellect. He gave us the intellect so that we have to think, is this lawful deed to do? Or is, the, or is it unlawful so we have to avoid it? But sometimes we fall into a gray area. Things become little shady. And this is what our, the, the next hadith discusses. So the next hadith is about avoiding doubtful matters. So, Al-Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiyallahu anhu, yaqul, Samihtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqul, inna al-halala bayyinun wa inna al-harama bayyin. So, Al-Nu'man ibn Bashir said, I heard Rasulullah, the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah, saying, that which is lawful is clear. And that which is unlawful is also clear. Is, there are evidence. This is clear. This is lawful. There's evidence that this thing is lawful. There are evidence that specify the, some things unlawful. وَبَيْنَهُمَا مُشْتَبِهَاتٌ لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ And between the two of them are doubtful or there are ambiguous matters. So when you, when you do a lawful thing, you don't think about it. But when you do an unlawful thing, you need someone, you feel that you need someone to give you a fatwa, that it's okay to do it. Your heart makes you feel anxious. It makes you feel uneasy that you did that, that deed. And that's, of course, if a person has a sound heart, a good heart. It is hard to sin the first time. But then, if someone continues, then it becomes okay. It becomes a habit to think, to sin. There should be istighfar for each sin so it is erased. So between the two, the lawful and the unlawful, there, there are ambiguous matters. It is better always to leave the doubtful matters even though when they may be halal, just to ensure that the doors of haram are completely closed. And there are people, the people of Allah, the people of Allah leave a boundary of halal. They leave a boundary of halal, not of ambiguous matters, boundary of halal. So not to fall into the doubtful matters. So. What, what is the end of this sentence? So between the two areas, the halal and the haram, there are ambiguous matters about which not many people are knowledgeable. And here comes the importance of seeking knowledge. The importance of learning about our religion. Knowledge. And knowledge is something that we have to keep going and going and going and seeking until we die. The more we learn, the more we find that our, we are ignorant. There are so many things in this world so if we learn something, there are a lot more that, that we have to learn about. 
فمن اتقى الشبهات فقد استبرأ لدينه وعرضه ومن وقع في الشبهات وقع في الحرام كالراعي يرعى حول الحما يوشك أن يرتع فيه ألا وإن لكل لكل ملك حما ألا وإن لكل ملك حما ألا وإن حما الله محارمة So we have so he who avoids these doubtful matters so certainly that person would clear himself in regards to his religion and his honor but he who falls into the doubtful matters falls into that which is unlawful we just we just mentioned it we have to have a clear margin between halal and haram so we do not fall into the haram it's like the shepherd who pastures around a sanctuary all but grazing grazing their in so verily Every king has a sanctuary, and Allah's sanctuary is his prohibition. So we have to be careful. The gray area, the doubtful areas, we have to avoid. To be on the safe side. And this dunya, is full of fitan. So many bad things are circling us that we have to avoid. أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَ إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ In the body, there is a morsel of flesh which... If it be sound, then all the body is sound. And which if it be diseased, then all the body is diseased. This part of the body is the heart. So the whole thing goes around, revolves around the heart. When we have a good heart, a sound heart, then things will become easier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shara, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ The day when there will not benefit, nothing will benefit anyone no not wealth not his children nothing will benefit anyone but only one who comes to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart now how can we have a sound heart first of all we have to make dua and then one of the people of allah mentioned that to get a sound heart you do this when you pray fajr of course you pray the two rakahs of sunnah before it so after you pray your sunnah just stay for a few minutes and say 41 times ya hayyu ya qayyum la ilaha illa ant so this is the secret. This is a secret to have a sound heart. Ya hayyu ya qayyum, la ilaha illa ant. 41 times. After you finish praying your sunnah, two rakahs, you say 41 times, ya hayyu ya qayyum, la ilaha illa ant. And then you pray your fart. 
the fajr. So uh, you might ask, what? Okay, what are the the signs of a pure heart? So you always think of the akhirah. You always think of death. You always think that we are not living forever in this dunya. We want to go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clear heart that doesn't have anything in about any any bad feelings, any bad, bad thoughts, anything about any other person. We want to have our heart pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our heart should have Allah and the messenger in it. No dunya. Dunya, the dunya should be in our pockets, not in our hearts. It's good to be rich. It's good to spend for the sake of Allah, but it's not good to love money, to love wealth. Money, wealth, everything should be in your pocket, not in your heart. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger are in our hearts. So continuously feeling upset if someone uh, 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 does something bad, uh, does a sin, and the heart would immediately urge that person to repent and to do istighfar. So there is nothing in this heart except the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pleasure of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the concern uh, uh, to, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to get sa a sound heart. Now, if we ask ourselves, uh, what, what is this uh, way that uh, the friends of Allah has shown us? It's just a nasiha. It's just giving advice. And this is what, what the next hadith is about, that uh, uh, Ibn Uwais al-Dari uh, said, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ad-deen al-nasiha. Qulna liman? Qala lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasoolihi wa li a'immati al-muslimina wa a'ammatihim. So the uh, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the religion is nasiha. It's to give good advice. And those people of Allah has given us advice of how to get a sound heart. So people ask, who to give advice to who we are, Rasulullah? And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to Allah, to his book, to his messenger, and to the leaders of the Muslims and to the common faults of the Muslims. So Giving nasiha, giving an advice, has uh, two, two ways. You give advice for a, a good person to be better, or you give adv advice to someone who is sinning just to avoid sinning and, of course, to be better. So the first the first part is to give advice for people to get better, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you mention what, what you, what you want to say publicly to, to everyone with the intention that you are doing this just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the second, the second part, if you see someone sinning, you give him advice, but there are conditions for these advices. So the first one is to do it in private, between you and that person. And you show him that you don't have any benefit out of saying the words that you're saying, except that you want to help him 
to be away from Allah's punishment. So, and then, of course, the, the, the niya, the intention is that you are doing this for the sake of Allah. And you make dua for that person. So, the nasiha uh, is wanting good for, for someone else. This is the nasiha. Uh, the first per person to practice nasiha is the mom. Of course, the, the parents. So, if the mom gives nasiha to, gives uh, an advice for her child about his uh, studies, about his career, about something, then she is doing this advice for, for dunya-wise. But the wise mom cares about the akhirah of her children. So she keeps giving nasiha, she keeps giving advice since they are young. So that when they grow up, they would be uh, similar to those, to those people, whom, to those young men whom are... You, you remember the story of Sayyidina Usama bin Zayd? We, we talked about it in previous uh, series when, when, when I talked about the Sahaba, the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was 17 years old when he led the, the Muslim army to go to fight the Romans. 17 years old to lead the army. So when you as a mom take care of your children since they are young, when you always give them nasiha, when you always give them advice, then they will be those people people whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be proud of on the day of judgment. They will be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what, as mothers, we have to raise our children to be. But we have to start with ourselves. We have to work hard on our heart. We have to have a pure heart so that we can, we, we, we taste the meaning of the word good heart, pure heart, so we can convey this meaning. We can uh, make others taste the same thing that we are tasting. So giving nasiha is that you, are, you want good for someone with a sincere heart. It's just for the sake of Allah. And this was one of the great and noble qualities of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He gave nasiha to his ummah continuously. He showed us the way that if we follow, then we will be safe on the day of judgment. We will be all united under the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have to purify our hearts. And how can we give nasiha to Allah? We have to believe in Allah. We have to, to purify our hearts. We have to have Allah in our heart and only Allah with his messenger. So we have to strive hard in worshiping Allah and in following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to be sincere in our worship. We have to glorify Allah. This is how we give nasih to Allah. This is what it means. How, what does it mean to give nasih to his book? It means that we have to believe in the Quran and we have to follow the orders of the Quran. We have to have a, a strong bond between us and the Quran. Every day we should have a, 
a, a special a special time of the 24 hours just to connect with the Quran. It's not just a book that's on the bookshelf. No, the Quran should be in our heart. We should impl implement it. We should, we should glorify it. We should learn it. We should teach it. This is how we have nasiha to Allah's book. We have nasiha to his messenger. And nasiha lillahi wa li rasulihi. How can we have a nasiha to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's by believing in him and putting his statement above any other statements. To be eager that we want to learn about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We, we want to know about his seerah. We want to know about his companions. We want to follow his sunnah. We want to learn about about his manners, we want to emulate, emulate them. We want to know how to love Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And nasiha to the leaders of the Muslims, we want to be good to them for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We want to make dua for our leaders. We want to make dua for the Ummah. So we want to show love. We want to show respect for the scholars, for, for the people in charge. The leaders of the Muslims. And we do nasiha for the common folks of the Muslims by loving them. By loving them. By respecting the elders, by showing mercy to the youngs, to the youngsters. By being happy when people are happy, by sharing our, uh, by sharing the uh, feelings, and of course by having a sound heart towards everyone, and this is what we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for granting us a sound heart, for giving us a sound heart and we ask him to accept us we ask him to 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 give us the best of all the stages that we are going to pass by in our lives we ask him to show us the lawful we ask him to show us the unlawful and we ask him to clarify the ambiguity so that we will meet him so that we will meet him and he will be pleased with us and we will be pleased with the rewards that he will be preparing for us. Ya Rabbana lak alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik and until we meet again next week inshallah I would leave you I would leave you now by sending your salam and my salam to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.